we're going to take some uh, some faecal samples now to um, look at how many worm eggs there are um, coming out of our sheep. Now the thing about that is what it's going to do is it's going to tell us how many or give a really good idea how many adult worms there are inside the sheep at this point in time that are actually laying eggs. Now we can use this in a number of ways. Um, one way that people think of it is if we take this count and it comes back and it's relatively high then it indicates that maybe the sheep actually need drenching but also we can use it to find out whether or not our wormer has actually worked properly and probably for most people this is where you would start um, and you would actually take a sample before you worm the sheep and then you take another sample at a set number of days afterwards. So if we're going to take a sample it's really important that we get a representative result for the whole group of sheep. Um, now we've got a small group here and generally speaking what we would say is irrespective of the size of the mob we want somewhere between 10 and 15 individual fresh samples. Now that's really important because if we don't there's a, going to be quite a variation within that group and we need to make sure that we get a random sample that's big enough so that our answer is, is, is really indicative of what's going on in the group. Second thing is they must be fresh samples. So here we've got a very fresh sample. We know we've had only had these sheep in here for a couple of hours so we know that that's been put there in the last couple of hours. Why does it have to be fresh? Well if we don't get it fresh then particularly on a nice warm day like this very quickly the worm eggs will start to hatch so that the eggs won't be there for us to catch and it will be actually larvae that are in that dung pat so we need to make sure that it's fresh. The way you can do that is bring them into a small area like this. If you leave them in a small area or just put them up in the side of the field for a, sh for a short while, then you'll get fresh samples. And if you've got your gloves on, it's actually really easy. Um, it's a check whether it's fresh or not. It should still be warm. And if it's not warm, then in, in all, to all intents and purposes, don't treat it as being a fresh sample. The other way that you can do it is if you just go out first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning is probably the best thing when they're out in the field, particularly if you're wanting to sample um, young lambs, then usually as they get up and stretch for the first time a lot of them will actually deposit out of the other end a nice fresh sample for you so you can just go and pick it up in the field. Two other really important things. The samples you take must be random. So as you find the fresh sample, you take it. You mustn't pick and choose, oh, I've had a few pellety ones, now I need to get a few scoury ones. You mustn't pick and choose, it must be completely random. And the other really important thing, and why I'm waving this little spoon around is, each sample needs to be roughly the same size. If one sample is only half the size of another, it's going to influence your overall result. So fresh, 10 to 15, the same size, and completely at random. And then you're going to get a pretty good indication of what's going on in that group. So from a point of view of size of sample then we use these little spoons from each sheep a small amount like that is fine and so long as from each sheep you take that same amount and put it all in the pot so these pots um, are very often what you would see from, from um, the VI centre or the vet might give you to take samples and you would put all those individual samples in there and then when it gets to the lab the lab will mix it up homogenize it and make sure that they sample it again and um, and take a representative um, sample from from there. Other things that you can do I mean that's a pot some labs will actually just give you a little bag um, and this lab just provides an ordinary plastic spoon the main thing is that it's about the right size and it encourages you to say, take the same sized sample sometimes some labs will send you a box with 10 or more individual pots in and there you put an individual sample in each pot you put one in each pot and then the lab will actually combine it at the other end but most of the time um, you're looking at either a pot or a small bag to put those in what you don't want to do is to um, do what a lot of people have done in the past and what happens is that it gets to the vets or the lab and somebody's taken a piece with their glove and they've turned their glove inside out and somebody in the lab, the poor person, has to try and do a faecal egg count on that. Do not do that, you will not be very popular and you'll not get a very good result.